Hi, my name is Mark. I'm the inventor of the Dirt Locker Hillside Terracing System. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to assemble and install this system for any hillside. First, let's look at a brief summary of how easy it is to install the Dirt Locker system. Step one, we will measure the project area to determine how many Dirt Locker components will be required and which Dirt Locker model will be appropriate for this site. Step two, we will check the area to see if there are any obstacles that we need to work around. Step three, based on our measurements and the obstacle review, we will create a layout plan so we know exactly how to configure the dirt locker system. Step four, choose which side of the dirt locker will be showing outward. Step five, pre-assemble the whole dirt locker system on a flat surface. Step six, we will pull the assembled dirt locker system onto the location and stake it down. Step seven, we will backfill with good planting soil. Step eight, plant the desired plants and then sit back and admire. Now, let's take a detailed look at each step of the dirt locker installation process. The first thing we need to do for this project is determine how many dirt lockers will be required and which dirt locker model will be appropriate for the slope we're going to work on. To determine the number of dirt lockers needed for any project, you need to first calculate the area of the location. You do this by multiplying the length times the width, which returns the total square footage. For this project, the total is 84 square feet. Divide the total square footage by 3.5. This will tell us how many dirt lockers are needed for any project. In this project, 24 dirt lockers are needed for this location. Since this location is not perfectly square, we will add five extra dirt lockers to create a partial third row. This gives us a final estimate of 28 dirt lockers. In order to determine the dirt locker model, you need to calculate the angle of your slope. You can do this easily with a level and a tape measure. Place one end of a four foot level on the hillside with the other end pointing straight down the hill. Measure the height from the bottom of the level to the ground. Make sure that the level is completely plumb when you take this measurement. Also, make sure you're measuring from the bottom back end of the level. Well, we're almost ready to assemble and install the dirt lockers, but we're gonna take a quick survey of the area to make sure we don't run into any problems. So in this case, we've got a couple pre-existing things such as this, these sprinklers. We also have a tree over here. Well, one of the great things about the dirt locker is how flexible it is and how easy it is to maneuver around obstacles such as these. So we're not gonna have to trench, we're not gonna have to dig out anything or move anything. We're gonna just work right around them using the flexible nature of the dirt locker and how easy it is to install. Okay, we're ready to assemble the units. Now we just need to determine what the layout is gonna look like. Each dirt locker, when assembled, is two feet wide by one and a half foot deep. Since this location is 24 feet wide, we will lay out 12 dirt lockers for the first row at the top of the slope. The depth of this location is roughly three and a half feet, so we will lay out two rows of dirt lockers. Since the back of this location is wider, we will add a third row with five dirt lockers to compensate. We will also skip one of the dirt lockers to allow for the existing tree. Well, we're ready to assemble. We just need to make a quick decision about what surface we want to be facing us when the garden's done. So the dirt locker has two surfaces, a gloss finish and a matte finish. Decide which finish you would like to show and have that finish facing up as you assemble the dirt lockers. In order to better demonstrate how the dirt locker system is assembled, we're going to lay out all the components on the homeowner's sidewalk and then we will connect them together without using any special tools or fasteners. Typically, you will assemble the dirt locker system at the bottom or top of the hill or another convenient location. Before we begin assembling, let's take a look at the anatomy of a dirt locker. The top of the dirt locker is the straight edge and the bottom is the curved edge. The curved edge is what compensates for the slope of the hill and allows the straight edge to be level once installed. The cell tab and the cell slot allow us to connect many cells in one row. Remember, 
We have 12 cells in the first row of this project. We will connect them by inserting the cell tab of the first unit into the cell slot of the second unit and so on. The row tab and center slot allow us to add the next row of cells by connecting the row tab of a new dirt locker into the center slot of the previous row above. Let's see the full assembly from the beginning. Following our layout plan, we begin by connecting our first row of 12 cells together. We always start with the top row first. Make sure you orient all of the units in the same direction with the curved edge pointing down and the flat edge pointing up. Also, make sure your chosen finish, flat or glossy, is facing up. Notice that turning the dirt locker with a cell tab 90 degrees makes it much easier to insert in the cell slot. Once inserted, return it to its former position and move on to the next cell. Repeat this process until all the cells in the first row are connected together. Now we will lay out the second row of dirt lockers, which according to our layout plan has 11 cells. Position the row tabs towards the center slots of the first row. We are now ready to connect the second row. With the flat edge pointing up and the curved edge pointing down, insert the row tab of the new dirt locker into the center slot. The best way to do this is by tipping the back of the unit up and then inserting it into the slot. There are two channels on the row tab. The channel on top is deeper than the bottom channel. Pop the top channel in first. Then push down on the tab so the bottom channel is also seated into the center slot. Continue building the second row of cells by attaching the row tabs of the dirt lockers in the second row to the center slots of the dirt lockers in the first row. The dirt lockers are designed to fit together snugly. So connecting the row tabs for the first time may take a little manipulation in the beginning, but you will get the hang of it very quickly. The connection between the row tab and center slot is designed to be extremely strong. You won't have to worry about it coming apart. The strength of this connection is what allows us to add as many rows as needed on any project, including hillsides with much steeper slopes. Return again to the first cell of the first row. We will now connect the cell tab of the first dirt locker to the cell slot of the second dirt locker in the second row. Complete the rest of the second row by connecting all the cell tabs to the neighboring dirt locker cell slot. Remember that turning the dirt locker cell tab 90 degrees makes it much easier to attach. Using these basic assembly principles, you will be able to build any size or shape dirt locker system with as many cells and rows as needed for your particular project. Now that we've assembled all of the dirt lockers on a flat surface, we're ready to pull the entire system onto the location. As we are pulling the system to the location, we leave it folded accordion style. This makes it extremely easy to maneuver into place. Once the top row is in place, space the dirt lockers evenly so the opening of each unit is two feet apart. You can use a fixed measuring device, such as a 2x4 cut to length. On this project, we used large nails and pre-placed them two feet apart. Notice that we did not pre-assemble the third row of dirt lockers. We did this so we could work around the tree. The dirt locker system is extremely flexible. You can add or subtract dirt lockers at any time throughout the process. On larger projects, we recommend having one person station every fifth or sixth dirt locker when pulling it up the hill. It is also recommended that you use common irrigation J stakes to stake off the top row of each junction, as well as staking down the end units that are not attached to other dirt lockers. Now that the dirt locker system has been pulled into place and staked off, we're ready to backfill with good soil and start the planting process. Because there is a brick wall at the top of this location, the soil is brought up from the bottom. However, on larger jobs and where possible, it is better to backfill from the top of the hill. As you can see, the dirt locker system, when it's in place, is easy to walk on and maneuver into. And, and that's because of its design and how rigid this material is. I mean, it's flexible, yet it's very, very strong. And one of the, the great benefits of this product is being able to walk on a sloped terrain. 
for anybody who has worked on hillsides or sloped terrains or managed them, you know how difficult it is. You're sliding and half the battle is actually just staying put on that, on that slope. Well, this takes that part of the battle away. Okay, we've assembled the dirt lockers. We've put them into place. We've backfilled them with good soil. Now we're ready to do the fun part, which is the planting. Now I'm mixing the, uh, the new topsoil in with the first couple of inches of native soil. That'll help the, help the plants root into that native soil because ultimately you want them taking root into the slope. Okay, so now that we've put the, the soil in place and uh, have loosened up uh, that, that first couple of layers, you can see how easy it is to maneuver and how easy it is to make indentations for the plants. We just, we don't need a shovel or anything like that. Just using our hands. So we've dug out the holes. We're ready to put the plants in, but I just want to make sure each one of these planting areas is, is watered really deeply because that's, that's really important, especially in this dry climate that we have that sub, that subsoil that's nice and wet, uh, that those roots will want to grow into that wet soil. So we're going to fill each one of these holes up like this, and then we're going to just quickly and easily come back, put the plants in according to our diagram, backfill or push the soil in around them, and we'll be done. One, one additional advantage of the dirt lockers is that you are able to pre-plan exactly how you want your garden to look. If this were just a slope and I was a, wanted to put some plants on it, I, I think it would be difficult for me. I'm not a designer, so it, it would be difficult for me to determine how many plants I'm going to need, uh, what, what pattern, you know, how I'm going to have that look. But with the dirt lockers in place, I know exactly how many spaces I have. And I can just draw, and I can do a, a pretty crude drawing uh, with semicircles. And each one of those semicircles represents a dirt locker, and I just draw it out in the pattern that we've put in place. And then from there, all I need to do is color code according to the color pattern that I want. It makes it very easy, and I I'm, I'm, don't have to be a horticulturalist or a landscape designer in order to make this work very well. It makes it much simpler. Also notice that we've got a nice little lip around this plant and what that's going to help us do is is one you know capture any irrigation uh, water that we put happen to put down there but also it's going to help us capture any natural rainwater that might fall and in Southern California we want to we want to capture as much as we can um, but it the the advantage of the dirt locker is that it captures it in such a way that we don't wind up losing topsoil by it eroding away and taking the root ball with it. Thanks for watching this video. As you can see, using the dirt locker system, we were able to quickly, easily, and affordably transform this unproductive eroding slope into a beautifully terraced garden.